Hi, today we're going to take a look at the new auto configuration capabilities for SAML enabled SSO login between Pulse One and PCS. What this enables is it enables admins to use a secondary directory uh, through PCS to log in to Pulse One. So uh, any admin that is in, uh, say, Active Directory, ODAP, can have their account activated through SSO uh, to be used in Pulse One. Uh, if we look here, we're looking at a, a standard uh, Pulse One appliance. Uh, the first thing we did was uh, we connect the, the PCS appliance into Pulse One. Uh, this is done by adding an appliance, giving it a name, and then taking the registration code over to the PCS appliance, configuration, Pulse One settings, and then inputting the API URL uh, and registration code. Uh, from there, it'll register, and if you see these two green lights, you know that it is successfully registered, and over here, you'll see connected. Uh, once we get that, it's good to come into the PCS appliance and take a look at some of the SAML configurations uh, to make sure that it's ready uh, to be connected via SSO. So first, you'll want to fill out the host, FQDN, uh, this is just going to be the host of the PCS appliance. And then double check the SAML metadata provider to make sure that that has an entry UID. Uh, and that should be all you need there. Uh, next, you want to uh, check these settings to make sure these are all in line. Uh, you want post, reuse existing, accept unsigned, auth. Make sure you get your signing certificate that's used on the PCS appliance. And then you want to make sure that you have a uh, sign-in policy available um, for the SSO authentication. Um, directory server, you may need to set up a directory server in order to uh, use the SSO authentication. Uh, and at this point, we have nothing else in here. Uh, no SPs are listed. Uh, so what we want to do now is we want to come back to the Pulse One appliance, Enterprise Connections. First thing you want to do is turn Auto Configure SAML into, onto True. And now you'll see the metadata options have disappeared. Uh, and this will uh, this will fill those out for you and uh, make sure all those configuration settings on the other side are correct. So now we're going to select the identity uh, provider, the PCS appliance, hit save, verify. So you're good on this side. And now if we come back over here, uh, you'll be able to see in the SAML configuration. We now have an auto-configured entry. If you look inside of it, you'll see this has all been done for you. It's listed as a service provider. And then if you look at the identity provider, you'll see that it's now been filled in here. So now that that's all done, uh, to test that, you want to come in and make sure that there's an administrative account that has the same username as a user in your uh, directory that you'll be using for SSO. Uh, this, this name does need to match. Uh, whatever uh, whatever user is going to be logged in. Uh, so any admin that you want to access via SSO, you do need to add first. Uh, the email uh, does need to be defined, but it's not going to be used for registration or anything like that. There will not be a password that's defined. And just make sure to assign a role, and then sign-in method needs to be set to enterprise SSO. If you see, uh, local authentication can be used, uh, but for this deployment, we're going to use enterprise SSO. So since we have this account set up, we can go ahead and log out. And now instead of logging in with a standard username and password, you go to Enterprise SSO. You see it redirects to the PCS appliance. And oh, because I was already logged in, it redirects to the PCS appliance and asks for the authentication information. Uh, if you saw, it automatically logged me in the first time because I was already logged into PCS, so it just reused that session. Now if we user this is that same username and that is it thank you and have a good day